All right, guys, the big lesson in Unit 8 is 8.3, volumes of solids with known cross-sections, including disks and washers, okay? There's really three different things we're looking at. Volumes of solids with known cross-sections, disks, washers. Those are like the three different things, okay? Um, okay, before we start, you have to know certain area formulas, all right? And we'll talk about what a cross-section is in a minute, but hopefully you guys remember all these area formulas, okay? We have uh, area equals side squared for a square, rectangles base times height. A semicircle is one-half pi r squared. A triangle is one-half base times height. And an equilateral triangle, I haven't seen that too much, but it's root three over four side squared, okay? Um, those are the different shapes that we have to know. So volume of a solid with a known cross-section. Basically, here's how it works. Uh, let me show you a picture so you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, so basically this like rectangle that you guys see right here, this is the xy plane. So let's say I'm taking this um, set of equations. I think this is like looks like square root x and x squared, okay? So it's taking these equations and it's telling me that every cross-section, so when I cut it, is going to be one. Okay, a cross-section is like when you cut something and you look at it, that's the cross-section. It could be a circle, it could be a rectangle, it could be a triangle. So let's say every cross-section is a square. So I'm going to make one square right there, right? And then I'm going to make two squares, three squares, four squares, five squares, okay? And the more squares I make... Sorry, it's lagging a little bit. Okay, now this is from 0 to 1.5. Oh, that's why. Okay, so let's go all the way to here. Ooh, you guys see that? So that's what squares looks like. So every cross-section, I make more and more and more squares, and that's what the volume with cross-section of squares looks like, okay? Here's an example of cross-sections with equilateral triangles. All right, so every cross-section is an equilateral triangle, and once you sum them all up, okay, which is what the integral comes in, makes this really cool-looking shape, okay? Uh, semicircles, so here's one semicircle, and there's more and more and more semicircles, all right? So that's the first type of volume that we're going to be talking about, is volumes of a known cross-section. Now, look, all you have to do is integrate the area of a cross-section. And it will always tell you one of two things. It will say it's perpendicular to the x-axis, all right, or perpendicular to the y-axis. And that's just the difference between doing it as a dx or a dy. Most of the time we do dx's, but sometimes we'll have like dy's, okay? So let's kind of talk about how to do this. Okay, find the volume of a solid whose base is a triangle bounded by y equals negative 2x plus 2, that's this line, okay, x equals 0, y equals 0, whose cross-sections are squares perpendicular to the x-axis. I'm just going to draw one, okay? So basically, you guys, there's a square perpendicular to the x-axis to make it look like kind of three-dimensional. I don't know. All right, and then I'm going to sum up all these squares. There's my next one would be like a big square right here. There's my next one would be like a little square right here. And I would sum up all these squares, okay? So it's kind of nice to have a picture just so you can see what's going on. All right, <clears throat> now I don't want to confuse myself, so I'm just going to put one square right here for now, okay? And I am going to integrate the volume... Now look, it's from A to B, and this started at 0 and ended at 1, so that's where that comes from, and then it's side squared, okay, because I'm doing squares, side squared. Now I have to look at this picture and decide what is the length of this side right here, okay? Well, here's the deal. This line is y is negative 2x plus 2, so whatever x is, the height is going to be that minus 0. So the height of that line is negative 2x plus 2, and that's the side of the square. So the volume is the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 2x plus 2 squared. 
and then we can integrate that, okay? Um, now, there's two ways you could integrate this. You could do U sub, you could go, um, or reverse chain rule, I guess, and you could go like negative 2x plus 2 to the third over 3, but then remember, because of reverse chain rule, that's negative 2. I have to go 1 over negative 2. It's probably the easiest way you could do it. You could also multiply this out, like foil it out, um, and then integrate each part, okay? Um, once I integrate that, I'm going to evaluate it. Let me take all this out front. So it's negative 1 over 6 and then negative 2x plus 2 to the third. Okay, so here's what I get. Negative 1 over 6, when I plug that in, negative 2 plus 2 is 0 to the third. When I plug in 0, it's 2 to the third. So it's negative 1 6 times negative 8, which is positive 8 over 6, or 4 thirds. And that's the volume of that shape that I just created. Okay? Um, okay, so let's look at another example. A lot of times they will have you set up but do not integrate, right? So set up but do not integrate. Volume of solids with the same base as in example one, but the cross sections are semicircles. Okay, so now on the same picture, but it's going to be a semicircle, all right? So I'm still integrating from zero to one. But this time, it's not S squared. It's a semicircle, which is pi r squared, but it's half of it. So it's one half pi r squared. Now, the most difficult part about these is definitely going to be the semicircle because I have to get this in terms of the radius. And if you guys look right here, okay, the radius of the semicircle, right? That's the radius right there. The radius is half of that whole thing, okay? So this equation is negative 2x plus 2. So the radius is negative 2x plus 2 over 2. Because it's half, because the whole thing would be a diameter. So I can simplify that a little bit. But anyway, this is going to come out to be half because it's a semicircle pi and then radius squared and the radius is half okay uh oh and i need to put a dx on there and i am good so set up but do not evaluate a lot of times i'll ask you to put something like that into your um your calculator to evaluate it right this one's like a little bit tricky but there you go okay Cool, perfect. All right. So those are, let's see. Okay, here's another one. Cross sections. All right. So cross sections are rectangles, and it's bounded by, again, I just like to have a picture, a volume whose base is bounded by. Okay, guys, that is a upside-down parabola that is up to, okay? An upside down parabola that's up to. This is just the line y equals x. All right. So the area we're trying to make a volume out of is that. And what are we making? Rectangles. Okay, cool. Uh, Perpendicular to the x axis. All right. Great. So my rectangle, the base of my rectangle will be there. And then the heights of each rectangle will come off of that. Okay. So it's just the integral of the area of the rectangle from here to here. Now, first of all, guys, we've got to figure out where those cross. It didn't tell me. There's a pretty easy way to figure out where those things cross is you set these two equal to each other. So when I bring everything to the same side, I get x squared plus x minus 2, which is x plus 2, x minus 1 and x equals negative 2 and 1, those are the points where those cross. So I'm going from negative 2 to 1, okay? And we know that the area of a rectangle is base times
times height. All right. Well, the base is the whole distance across from there. And the distance across from there is whatever the top curve is minus whatever the bottom curve is. Okay, so the base is negative x squared plus 2 times x. That's, or sorry, not times x, my bad. Negative x squared plus 2 minus x. That's the base. Now, right here, it says the height is 1 fourth. And it just tells me that that's what the height is, okay? So when I put it in here, it would be the base times the height as a dx. And this was a setup, but do not integrate. Okay. Um, okay, cool. All right, guys. So let's take a look. This one is definitely going to be a little bit tricky. Okay. So we have volumes of solids whose bases are in this circle. Now, the main thing I'm going to need is that distance right there, okay? Because we're going perpendicular to the y-axis, I need to do these things as a dy on both of these, which actually means I need to solve this for x, okay? So look, if I have x squared is 1 minus y squared, and then if I square root that, I get plus or minus 1 minus y squared, okay? Now, let's take a look at this real quick. On decimals, let me get rid of that this. Okay, so we know x squared plus y squared equals 1 is a circle with a radius of 1. All right, get this out of there. Okay, there we go, right? Now, if I solve for x and I just get, okay, so x equals the square root of 1 minus y squared. All right, let me make this a little bit thicker so you guys can see it. That gives me that half, okay? That gives me that half. Now, the other half would be negative square root 1 minus y squared. Make that one a little bit like thicker here. That's that half, all right? But it's really hard to find a distance between those two halves, okay? So, does it make sense to you guys that basically from, if I just count this way, from here to here is the square root of 1 minus y squared, okay? And it, over here, it's negative, but it's the same distance. So, if I'm going all the way across, does it make sense that there's two, all right? So, it's square root of 1 minus y squared going this way, okay, going to the right, square root of 1 minus y squared going to the left. So instead of using a plus minus, I can just double it. So I'm going to double this, and I'm going to say, okay, so this base right here is 2 times the square root of 1 minus y squared, okay? So it's an integral, it's a dy. And on the y-axis, where am I going from? Well, I'm going from here to here, all right? So I'm going from down here, negative 1 to 1. And you guys, it says that the cross-sections are equilateral triangles. Now, i got to go back and remember, an equilateral triangle is root 3 over 4 side squared, okay? So this is going to be root 3 over 4 side squared. And if I look, what's the side of each equilateral triangle? Well, it's that base, which was double square root 1 minus y squared. Okay? Whew. So it's a little bit tricky, but that's basically how that one is going to come out. Now let's look at this next one. Same exact question, except for now, they're not um, equilateral triangles. They're rectangles. All right. Well, look, I'm still going from negative 1 to 1. Now, a rectangle, remember, is just base times height. Okay, so once we're doing, now that we're doing rectangles, we know base. The base is the width of that, which is 2 square root 1 minus y squared. The height 
is three times the base. So it's three times two squared one minus y squared. We put this whole thing in here, base times height. We can write that as a six or whatever, as a dy from negative one to one. Okay, so now that we have done um, integrating with cross sections, known cross sections of specific areas, just the integral of the area, okay? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is something called disks and washers, which is kinda cool. All right, so circular cross sections can be formed by revolving very thin rectangles about an axis of revolution. These are more commonly called disks. So I want you guys to picture this. I have this area right here, this area between the curve like that, but I'm actually gonna spin this curve around the axis this way. Okay, I'm gonna just like spin it. And can you guys see that like this would spin, it look like that, this would spin, this would spin. All right, so sometimes it's kind of hard to visualize. Um, there's something kind of cool in here uh, that I found that I'll show you guys this applet, right? Kind of let you see what it's, so this is doing the, um, let's do a solid method actually. Oh, here we go, revolve. Okay, so it revolves this around the axis. Now let's do this here. Okay, we'll go ahead and revolve this. Let's make a bunch of different rectangles. So I'm kind of looking right in here. Okay, guys, making a bunch. And now, oops, stay there. I'm going to revolve this. Check it out. As I'm revolving these, it makes like this three-dimensional picture, which we can kind of like turn around and look at, okay? So there's some pretty cool like apps that'll let you see what you're doing, but it, everything is a circular cross-section, all right? So if you guys can picture that, it's gonna be a circular cross-section going through there. Now, because we're making a bunch of circles, okay, the, um, Area of a circle we know is pi r squared. And we're just summing up a bunch of circles. So it's the integral of pi r squared. You can do this as a dx or a dy. It depends on whether you're revolving it around the x-axis or the y-axis. All right? And the trickiest part is to basically figure out whatever um, your radius would be. Now, the reason they brought the pi out front, well, because you're allowed to with constants. You don't have to, but you can. So set up an integral for the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by y equals x squared, y equals zero, x equals one. Okay, about the x-axis means it's going to be a dx. All right, you guys. And you use these same endpoints that you would use for area or something. So with the area of this, I want zero to one. That's the same thing that's going to be for my volume. And then it's just pi r squared. Okay, now this one's like a pretty simple one. If you guys think about the length of the radius of each of these circles as I'm spinning it around, okay? Let me kind of speed this up a little bit. The radius is basically from here to here, all right? And this radius is basically going to be whatever the y-coordinate is at any given time. And the y coordinate is, well, it's y equals x squared. Okay, so my radius is just x squared. All right, and that's going to be how I'm going to find the volume of that um, figure once I start revolving it. Okay, now this one doesn't necessarily have us um, solve it, but it's not that hard to solve, so I'll just show you guys real quick what you do. So my radius is x squared and then squared, so that's x to the fourth. And so it's just x to the fifth over five with pi out in front from one to zero. So it's one fifth minus zero fifths. So the, this volume is pi over five. Okay, and then you just integrate it and you can find the volume of that shape that we made. All right, the same question so let me go ahead and draw it. Zero, zero, one, one, two, four. Okay. So the volume of the solid, so I'm using the same solid for both of these, right? But this time, I'm bounding it by the y-axis. So it's taking this right here, and it's going to bound it over here. And can you guys picture now that the circles are going to go this way? OK, 
Okay, so it's going to rotate this way. It's going to kind of make like a bowl looking thing. All right. Since we're revolving it around the y-axis, this is going to be a dy. Okay. And, you know, in order to find my intersection points here, okay, look, this is the point uh, negative 2, 4. This is the point 2, 4. If I were doing a dx, I would be going from negative 2 to 2, but I'm not. I'm doing a dy. So i got to go from the y numbers, which is 0 to 4. All right? Because I'm going to be rotating it that way. Now, let's think for just a second about what the radius of this is. You guys, I'm not measuring it like that. That radius would be x squared. That's not what I'm measuring, okay? I'm measuring it in to here. So the question is, what is the distance from there to there? Well, in order to find it as a dy, I have to solve this for x, okay? And it's x equals the square root of y. So this distance right here is square root y. And then it's just pi times the radius squared, right? dy. So you have to like kind of think about it differently when you're revolving around the y-axis, everything in terms of y. Okay, so now to actually get this answer, the square root of y squared is just y. The integral of y is y squared over 2 from 0 to 4. So this is going to end up being pi times, okay, uh, if I plug in 4, 4 squared is 16 over 2, that's 8. Plug in 0, oh, 0 squared over 2 is 0, so this just gives me 8 pi for my volume. All right? Okay, so this is called the disk method because when I spin it, it makes like a disk-looking thing, and like the cross-sections are disks, right? So if I were to pull out like a singular cross-section right here, it would be a disk. It would be like a flat circle kind of thing. Okay, so that's called the disk method. Okay, so now we have a washer method. Now, this is kind of fun. Um, I kind of showed you a washer method on here. Because the thing about the washer method is it's like hollow. All right. So let's see if I can reset this. Um, oh, okay. Oh, it's trying to reset. Hang on here. Okay, so again, we look at a bunch of different, like, rectangle areas in here, bunch of different washers, and we just start revolving it. So here's this drop washer that's revolved around, okay? Um, so this is going to make, like, it's going to be hollow. I don't know if you guys can kind of picture that. I'm not letting me get more washers, but yeah, it's basically going to just revolve it like this, that little section, and that section is going to get, there we go. Oh, it's not changing in. That's okay. It's going to get fatter and then thinner as we go through there. All right. So let's go to the washer method because the cross sections look like washers. <clears throat> okay. Now, the only difference when you guys are doing washers is it's basically the outer radius minus the inner radius because it does like a big circle and then a little circle, right? And so we're taking pi r squared for the outer radius, pi r squared for the inner radius, and then that's what's rotating around, okay? So I use, uh, like, this is using capital R for the outer radius, small r for the inner radius, and it's really just pi r squared minus pi r squared, okay? And then um, it just factors a pi out front. All right, so let's look at my different, areas that I can set up integrals for, okay? Um, all right. And this is all in the same question. This is just y equals negative x squared minus x. Okay, so here's my disk, right? What this is saying is it's going to rotate me like that. So it's the integral of negative x squared plus x. Okay, pi, that height is my radius squared from 0 to 1, all right? And then I could multiply that out or whatever I need to do to be able to solve that one. Okay, now this one. Now, the only difference is I moved, I'm now rotating it around this line. So I want you guys to like understand what this is going to do. It's 
it's gonna make like like oh gosh it's so hard to like visualize this okay but it's gonna make like this go around like that but it's gonna have a hole in the middle okay if that makes sense okay so this is a washer now we're going around the line y equals negative one so it's this line right here okay so in my formula i'm going to go pi and it's still the integral from zero to one but i need to find out what big r is and what little r is now big r is from the top of that to that okay now you guys we know that this distance right here is negative x squared plus x like that's what that is because that's what that was given to me and so it's that distance plus all of this well since i'm one below the axis it's plus one so the big radius is negative x squared plus x plus one give myself a little more room here okay because i'm adding one because it's below the axis the small radius this is the small radius right here and look, no matter where I'm putting it, the small radius never changes. The small radius is one. And then this is just a dx, okay? Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, and now let's look at this one. This time it's on top, y equals two, and I'm rotating it up there. So I'm basically taking this little thing, rotating it all the way around like that, all right? Okay, so my uh, volume is going to be pi. It's still 0 to 1. Big R squared minus little r squared. Now, this is a little tricky. So, big R is this whole thing. Okay? And that whole thing is 2, but it's 2 minus whatever that is. So, this part is 2 minus that. This is 2 minus that. This is 2 minus that. And all these big radiuses are 2 minus that. Well, this is negative x squared plus x, okay? So it's 2 minus that. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, that is actually the bigger radius, if I think about this here. Because I'm, I'm going outward. So that's the smaller radius, all right? The bigger radius is that one all the way to there. So the bigger radius is actually 2. The smaller radius is 2 minus that value, which was negative x squared plus x. Okay, and then that's how I would set that up. They're both squared. All right, so these definitely can get like a little tricky when we start doing the washer method. Let's look at these last two examples, and then we'll do the rest in class. Okay? Okay, about the x-axis. So here we go. Pi. And then big radius squared minus little radius squared. All right. So from the axis, the outside radius is from there to there. Okay. Well, that's just the y coordinate that goes up to that line. So the outside radius is x plus 2 squared. All right. Now the inside radius is there to there. And I subtract that off so that I have the little part in between. So the inside radius is just the height of the x squared one. All right. And I'm going from here to here. Again, if it doesn't tell you where they're intersecting, you would set these equal to each other. And I could see that they're intersecting at negative 1 and 2. It tells me that anyways. All right. Okay. If, if I wasn't sure what those points were, I would just set x squared equal to x plus 2. So then that's going to be minus x minus 2. So then x is 2 and negative 1. Okay, so that's kind of where that stuff came from. And then you could either put it in your calculator or you can, you know, solve it by hand or whatever. This one just says to set it up. So, all right. Now we're going around the line y equals 4. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to draw that line at y equals 4. Okay, so we're still going to do pi, let me get that a little bit smaller, okay, um, pi, and then big radius squared minus little radius squared, and we're going about the line y equals 4, so we're rotating this way, so it's a dx, all right? My x coordinates, I already found them over here, they were negative 1 to 2. 
it's just really important on these to draw a picture. So if I am rotating it, you guys, around that, the outer radius will be this. Now let's think about this real quick, right? That's my outer radius. It's coming along this line. Well, what I know is that the height of that line is x squared. So wherever it is, like that's x squared, that's x squared, okay? So what are these radiuses? Those radiuses are 4 minus x squared, and that's the outer, okay? Because it's 4 taking away whatever's under here. Okay, then I have my inner radiuses, which are those. And what are those? Well, the other side of those that height right there is x plus 2. Like the whole thing is 4. So this is 4 minus parenthesis x plus 2. Okay, and then I could go through and like simplify that. 4 minus x minus 2. So I could just go ahead and write this as 2 minus x. Okay, and there we go. And now I'm set up to integrate it. All right, so it doesn't seem too bad. It's just that there's different kinds. There's volume cross sections. For the cross sections, you have to know like squares, triangles, semicircles, and then there's um, rotating around the x or the y axis or other lines. All right, so there's a lot to work on. We're going to work on a bunch of this stuff tomorrow.